Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into my video. This will be part 3 of the Sansui QRX 5500A restoration. If you haven't checked out part 2, it's where we install the power cord and see if this thing would power up. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put a clickable card up in the corner right about there. So you can check that out if you want. But this video is going to be focused on getting the unit to come out of protection mode. When we powered it up, if I remember correctly, uh, the relay clicked once, twice maybe, and then it just stay, it's just it been staying in protection ever since. So we've got to figure out why. Uh, it's been a few days, and I've been doing a lot of research on these units, and I've read that if, the, if it's stuck in protection mode, that it's either in the power amp assembly or in the uh, protection board. So what we're going to do is just kind of uh, perform visual inspection on, closer visual inspection on both boards, I found out how to remove the power amp board from the unit, and then we will have access to the protection board so we can take a look at that. And then we'll take a closer look at the protection board and uh, make sure that there is no issues and no obvious signs of stress on any components and go from there. Hopefully we could figure this thing out. So let's start by taking the power amp assembly out and then uh, we'll take a look at the protection board first. All right, I got the output board removed. It literally just slides out the back of the unit. How cool is that? You have access to everything on this. All the outputs, drivers, fuses, resistors, capacitors, everything. That is so cool. Wish they designed more receivers like that. Um, let's just start by going over the board a little closer now that we have uh, full access to it. So we'll start over here on this side. And I go through it, ceramic resistors. I'm just going to check for burn marks around resistors, uh, maybe some leaky capacitors, bulging capacitors. Just kind of go through it and make sure that so this is nothing obvious. Everything looks okay so far. No uh, signs of stressed resistors, which is good. So far, so good. Doesn't look like the board's gotten hot anywhere. On my 1280, the, the board was cooked on my power supply board. Just thing runs really hot. It was well done, you'd say. <laughs> um, oh, this resistor looks like it's been pulled. I don't know how well it shows up on camera. Looks like someone grabbed it with some pliers or something, yanked it out. Let's see what the trace looks like on the other side. Hmm. Looks okay, we can check it for continuity. Just to be sure. Oh, there's even more capacitors down here. Interesting. Um, okay, uh, I think next we can do, uh, I'm going to test the output transistors. I'll Try and pull, uh, I don't know if I want to pull them to risk damaging them. But I think what I'm going to do is just like the quick and dirty transistor check. Kind of what I did on the 1280 when we were diagnosing uh, that one because it wouldn't turn on. We're just going to go and see if, the, um, if we can find any shorts in any of these output transistors. Uh, we'll do it in circuit. I'll use my meter on the diode mode. And just kind of go across uh, base to collector, emitter to base, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. See if there's any opens or just blatant shorts. Because uh, if so, there that'll explain why this thing is stuck in protection mode. We don't want shorts. So we'll go through and I'll check those. And I'll also check the uh, driver transistors and then go from there. So I won't bore you with that because that's going to be super boring. Because there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of transistors on this board. But if I find anything, I'll come back to you. So I checked all the transistors. Every single transistor on this board I checked, actually. And uh, none came back with any shorts, and none came back with any opens. Every Everyone had a, a reading, um, but they're in circuit, so you, that really doesn't tell you how good the transistors are. Um, but they were all they all had some readings, and uh, 
no blatant shorts, so that's good. That's what we want. So why not go back to the basics here and check uh, all eight fuses before we move on to the protection board. So let me do that real quick. Check these real quick. Those are good. And those are good. So we know all the fuses are good. None of them burnt up when we powered it up for the first time. So that's good. So we know the transistors are okay, at least in circuit. They're all testing okay. You know the fuses are good. There's no signs of bulging caps, burnt resistors. I did check the continuity on the trace of those of that resistor that looked like it had been pulled. That checked out. Um, so I think we'll put this board off to the side and move on to the protection board. See if there's anything wonky going on in there. So let me get the camera readjusted and uh, we'll check that out. All right, I had a major rain fart and forgot to push record on the camera when we were going through the protection board here. So I apologize about that, but um, I will try and explain what I found uh, going through the board. So first glance, I noticed that someone had definitely been working on that uh, board before. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what I saw. It was atrocious, the solder joints and the lifted traces and all that stuff. But you know, that can all be fixed. And then I saw that they had replaced the two transistors. There's one in this heat sink here, and then there's one little guy right in front of it. Let me see if I can zoom in for you so you can check that out. There's the guy mounted to the heat sink and then this little guy right in front of it. And they had replaced them. And so I took a look at them and I looked in the service manual to see the uh, correct ones that should be in those spots and um, <laughs> come to find out that they installed the incorrect incompatible transistors in this circuit. Uh, for example, the little guy was supposed to be an NPN and they put a PNP in there, which is a no-no. And they also had the um, base, and, base and emitter legs flipped so the emitter was in the base spot and the base was in the emitter spot so that was just a blatant error there and the heat sink guy uh was the correct type but the um uh i think the amperage rating was way too low for what it should be in this circuit so luckily i had some spare uh, new transistors here and uh, through the help of the service manual i found what the stock ones would have been, and then I found the modern equivalents that would work. Swap those bad boys in. Oh, and when they replaced the resistor or the transistor in this heat sink, they put no thermal compound between the heat sink and the transistor. It was just dry. So put some thermal paste on, put the correct transistor in, repaired the traces, uh, repaired the board, um, and uh, that's what I found. I haven't powered it up yet, so I don't know if it's going to work. So uh, we can do that right now, actually. But that's what I found in the protection board. There was uh, a lot of wonkiness. And there was also one capacitor that uh, was bulging slightly that I replaced. But that was it. Uh, nothing, I guess that is kind of crazy. I was going to say nothing too crazy, but the transistor situation was a little crazy for me. Um, but let me zoom you out here, and we'll plug it in and see what happens. All right, we're ready to fire this thing up to see if we can get the relay to do anything. So I have the unit plugged in here. Without further ado, let's see what happens. Oh, we got a relay click. Well, let's wait a few seconds to see if it gets triggered back into protection. Wow. I think we got this thing working again. No way. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Wasn't too bad of a repair too. I just had to fix some shoddy workmanship. I can't believe that. That's so cool. Who knows the la when the last time this thing was actually working properly? It was filthy when it. It still is filthy, but it was disgusting when it showed up here. So I can't imagine it was was working in the past couple of years. That's really cool. Let's see if it pulls in a station. Let's go to. Let's see. I don't have an antenna, so we'll try AM. I see the signal meter trying to do something. Oh, 
There's something. Let's see if it see if we get those level meters to move. Oh yeah, look at that. There they go. I don't know how well they show up on camera. Oh that's that's so cool. This thing's working. I think all that's left is to uh we had to adjust the power supply. There's a, a an adjustment for that. Check the DC offset. Clean all the switches. That's going to be a long, long process there. There are a lot of switches and knobs in this thing. And I believe there was one other adjustment. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'll film uh, another video on that. I think I'm going to cut this video off here just so it's not super long. But we'll film another video going through the service procedure for this unit. And uh, go from there. We'll see if this thing's ready to pass a signal through. I, I don't see why not. Just did with the AM. We'll see if we get any output coming out of the speaker terminals. That's super cool. I'm excited now. I can't wait to hear this thing make some noise. But that'll be it for this video. Um, we went through uh, kind of a little troubleshooting and uh, inspected the power amp board. Found some wonkiness in the protection slash power supply board. Got all that squared away and this thing fired right up. Who would uh, who would have thought that putting the right transistors in would make it work? <laughs> but uh, that's it for uh, this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please be sure to let me know. And stay tuned for part four.